Okay, so you decided to abandon all of your musical integrity and set your band up with backing tracks. Where do you start? Let's find out. What's going on everybody? My name is Adam, I hope you're doing well. Now I've released a few videos about the pros and cons of backing tracks, and every time I do, someone reaches out and says, hey, what is the general workflow for getting backing tracks set up? So this week, I'm going to try my best to offer a ground level introduction to the process. Basically, the websites, apps, hardware, and software it's going to take for you to set up backing tracks for your project. For this video, I'll be going the most basic route for this process, meaning our setup is going to be a stereo playback file with click on one side and a mono mix of the backing tracks on the other. If you're looking for something a bit more in depth, let me know in the comments. Maybe we'll do a walkthrough of my band's Ableton Live setup at some point. Okay, first things first, where do you even find backing tracks anyway? Daddy, where do backing tracks come from? At the moment, your options are either going to be building them yourself using stems or in a DAW like Reaper or Logic Pro, or sourcing them through an online vendor. For this video, we're gonna be going the second route. Currently, the biggest player in this market is a website called karaokeversion.com. They offer the widest selection of backing tracks that I've been able to find. While their older stuff doesn't always live up to their reputation, the current stuff they're releasing is really, really good. And periodically, they'll go into their back catalog and update songs with better sounds and production. And if you purchase one of their songs and they do that, you get access to the new version as well. Each song costs $2.99 US, and they have a really intuitive interface which allows you to adjust the song's key and even do a preliminary mix down if you're needs are basic. You can literally build the backing track on their site and download it directly from them as an mp3 file. If this meets your needs, you're basically all set. For my band though, we like to be able to customize and or rearrange the structure of their recordings. So what we do is we will go in and solo every component we want to use and then download the stems individually so we can edit them later in a DAW. This process can be a bit time consuming, but the end result is going to be better overall. One thing to note, the stems don't always line up perfectly, so I recommend checking the box that says count in. That's going to give you a four count at the beginning of every stem so you can line them up in your DAW of choice. From here, you can remove sections, mute channels on certain parts, rearrange things to your preference, or add items like counts and cues to the click track so that anybody who's wearing in-ear monitors can know where the song is going. The other thing you're going to need to do here is to make sure that the instruments and the click are on the correct channels. For my band, we set the click and the cues to the left channel and all of the instrumentation to the right channel. You'll want to make sure that all of these are panned hard, meaning all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Otherwise, you're going to end up with bleed on your channels, which is not going to sound right. While you're in your DAW, it may also be a good idea to build basic click tracks for any tunes that don't require extra instrumentation. This may speed up the onboarding process and help your band get used to playing to click tracks, which will tighten up your sound. Okay, so you've got all your songs, they're all mixed down. Now it's time to bring them into rehearsal. What do you need to get these into your mixers, your in-ears, and out to front of house? The most common devices for track playback in this configuration are gonna be smartphones or tablets. If you're using a smartphone, Put it in airplane mode. The last thing you're gonna wanna hear at a gig is text alerts going through the PA. For this demo, I'll be using an iPad. There are a number of apps that you can use for playback. There's one called Show One, which has a really clean interface and is super easy to customize. My band already uses Band Helper for scheduling and set list management, so we also use it for track playback. For Band Helper, you basically upload all of your MP3 files to their server. Once uploaded, you can add additional information to help organize them and make it easier to locate the files you're looking for in the Band Helper interface. You can even add lyrics and chord charts to the song or add MIDI commands to change presets on your gear or adjust lighting cues. The general interface looks like this and you hit the speaker icon to begin playback. You can customize this layout a bunch of different ways, but this view is called Big Set List and I think it's the easiest layout for your drummer to trigger backing tracks and move through your set. Okay, let's talk about signal flow. There are a bunch of options for setting the output of an iPad to a mixer. The most basic is gonna be a cable like this, which is a stereo headphone jack on one end and a set of RCAs or dual quarter inches on the other. These can then be plugged into your mixer directly or through a pair of direct boxes. My band has a Rack DI we use in some circumstances, but I also have this really neat unit from Rapco Horizon, which basically cuts out all of the adapters and goes straight from the headphone output to a pair of XLR outputs. It also has switches for ground lifts and mixing down to mono and a couple of other features. These are about 150 bucks on Amazon. I will provide a link in the description. Okay, once everything is plugged into your mixer, you're going to wanna to make sure that your click is assigned pre-fader, which means it can be sent directly to your monitor mixes even if the channel is turned all the way down on the mixer itself. With this setup, any member of your band on in-ear monitors can adjust the level of the click without it bleeding through the front of house. Look, I know that this is a lot of information and feels like a big haul initially, but once you get a few songs under your belt, the process 
process doesn't take very long and you typically only have to do it once. But hopefully this is enough info to get you going down that path. And again, if you have any questions or need further instruction, please let me know. Hopefully this was a good introduction to get you started and the boost you need to get your band going on its next big move. That's gonna do it for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We post new videos here every single Friday. Also, we got some cool new designs in the merch store. Those are currently on sale. There'll be a link for that in the description. Have an awesome week and we'll see you next time.